Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Quispam Sis United Church on this special Mother's Day Sunday. It is an especially special day because the Valley Woodwinds are back with us again, and we are so grateful for uh, the music that you have offered, and we really look forward to the music that you will continue to offer this morning. So this is a special day, and to those of you who are celebrating Mother's Day, a happy Mother's Day, this is a time for us to recall and give thanks to those women who were our mothers or who were mother figures in us and who helped to guide us and inspire us and lead us on our way. So we give thanks for their, the place that they have had in our lives. 
And we also give thanks, as we do every Sunday, uh, for the word and the way of Jesus, which is for us the light of the world, the way in which God's love is fully and faithfully revealed. So in this time of worship, may the Spirit come upon us to grant us courage and peace and understanding. Good morning, everybody. Happy Mother's Day for all those here and there. Welcome to Chris Bemsis United Church. As part, of our, as part of our welcome, we light this candle lit from the flame of Christ's own light and love as we proclaim ourselves as a community where all people are invited without barriers based on age, gender, race, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, differing abilities, ethnic background, and economic circumstance. We celebrate the richness that, di that diversity brings to our church, even as it challenges us to walk down roads we have not yet traveled. We pray for God's spirit to guide us as we work for our reconciliation and justice for all persons in both church and society. Acknowledgement of territories. As we gather to worship, let us pause to remember that in this region we live and work and worship on lands that are by law the unceded territories of the Wabanaki peoples, predominantly the lands of the Mi'kmaq, Wolastaki, Passamaquoddy, and Penobscot. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its people. Thanks, Leslie. Celebrations. Apart from the fact it is Mother's Day, any other celebrations, pieces of good news to share? Yeah. May I offer a celebration? It's for our... Wow, yay. <laughs> that, is, that is cause for celebration. Please extend to him our congratulations, and I hope this is a special family time for... Uh, for all of you, yeah, yeah. fabulous. Yep. Happy birthday, Zoe Kirkland. Happy birthday, Bill. Oh, well, there you go. So, birthday wishes and anniversary good wishes go to uh, go to them. Other. Happy birthday, Bill. Leslie had a birthday this week. Happy belated birthday, Leslie. Yeah. Many happy returns. Brenda has a birthday. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> lots and lots of things, lots and lots of things to celebrate. This is. Uh, Okay, well, Bill, wherever you are, happy belated birthday to you. This is wonderful. One of the things that we do on Mother's Day is we remember some of those women who were particularly special to us, who were our mothers or who were mother figures. And so as the um, following uh, pictures uh, come on the screen, I would invite you to give thanks for those that you know, but also to think for yourselves about who some of the special women have been in your lives for whom you are grateful.
Please join me in our call to worship. Creator God, source of life and parent of the human family. Your spirit inspires us to dance with joy at the marvels of creation. You fill the world with wonder and invite us to care for all creation. You open our hearts with grace and make our hearts bold. Be with us as we sing and pray and reflect. Lead us to acknowledge and celebrate the wisdom we receive from those who've loved and cared for us. Let us worship God. Let us pray together. Holy, Holy One, one creator, creator, Wisdom, wisdom Love, we, we gather, gather today, today as individuals, as members of family units of many hues and colors, and as neighbors and friends. You welcome and accept us as we are with all our frailties and strengths, challenges and gifts, and offer us energy, compassion, and courage to care for one another with fullness and freedom. Be present in our midst, draw close to us, and bless us with grace, mercy, and peace this day. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 395. Oh, I'm sorry, you not. Good morning. There's just one last opportunity to help with the Sunday School this year. <laughs> so March the 26th is open, and it's going to be a very special class, whoever decides to volunteer, because the lesson is, has been prepared by Reverend Alicia Walls. She not only prepares lessons for her church, St. David's, but also three other United Churches in our area. And in the fall, we are going to be using her curriculum as well. Also, mark your calendar for June 9th. We are going to have our major celebration service again. We are going to be celebrating another year of being an affirming church, the graduates, the teachers, the Sunday school students, and the beginning of summer. I will, be, uh, post, I will be creating the sign-up sheet for next week, but you can be thinking about what delicious salads or beautiful rainbow dessert you would like to make. Thank you, Yuna. Now we will sing Hymn 395. <laughs>
as members of the Christian family, there are times in which we are lost and times in which we are found. And so it's good to take the opportunity to recognize and acknowledge some of the ways in which we are not yet fully the people that we have been created to be. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Oh God, you know how challenging it can be to live in relationship and yet you call us to do so. At times it is hard to be fully present to those we love and care about. Our patience may be short, we sometimes don't really listen, and it can be difficult to love and care for one another as we are. Help us to know that you are always with us, loving us so that we may love others. Regardless of who we are or who we aren't, regardless of what we have or haven't done, God's grace is never ending. God's love is ever present. We are embraced in freedom for who and what we are by the God whose mercy and understanding knows absolutely nobody. I'm wondering if any of the children who are here today would like to come up to the front or not. I think one at the back doesn't. So why don't why don't we just do it? Why don't we just do it this way? Let's just do it this way. Hi. How are you? Nice. Uh, whoops. I have a question for you. Can you think of something? really nice that your mom or maybe this morning your grandma did for you? Yeah? Can you tell me what that is or would you maybe tell your grandpa? Hmm? What did she do? Oh! Very, very pretty. You got nail polish. What pretty nail polish. And the nail polish and the nail polish matches your dress. Isn't that special? Wow. That's great. Anything else that someone you love has done for you that is special, memorable, there has to be something. Going once. Twice, yep. Yep. Wow. Wow. So a wonderful family gathering. How special is that? Especially when folks come from from far and wide. Well, that is wonderful, special indeed. I'm sure lots of memories for that. Any other special moments from people that love you? Wow. Yeah. So something something you and your mom did together, you uh, planted sweet pea uh, seeds. Yeah, get them started. That's that's wonderful. I'm sure that will be a special memory too. Any other events that will be special memories at some point in time or that were special memories already?
Seven birthdays altogether, so something to look forward to, yay. So regardless of what our circumstance is, there are moments of grace that come our way. There are particular opportunities we have to create special memories. And there are times in which we receive gifts that we don't expect but that can be very meaningful and important. So this morning we give thanks for all of those in families nuclear and beyond who give us these gifts and are instruments, revealers of God's grace and Children, if they want, can go to Sunday school. Two takers, one. There we go. Have fun. Away they go. Let us pray together. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened to us the light of eternity. Enlighten our minds and kindle our hearts with the presence of your Spirit, that we may hear your words of comfort and challenge in the reading of the Scriptures. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pretty okay, thank you. <laughs> John 17, 6 to 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, and they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my job, have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, <clears throat> but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in the truth. This is the word of the Lord.
I'm kind of thinking maybe you folks should just keep playing for a little bit more. Let's pray. Holy One, may the words spoken, heard, and pondered this day be acceptable in your sight and be in accordance with your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, as today is Mother's Day, it seems like an appropriate time to reflect on some lessons that mothers can teach. And I especially like the following recollections that one child has offered. My mother taught me many things. And she taught me about religion when she said, you had better pray that that stain is going to come out of that carpet. My mother also taught me about time travel when she declared, you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. My mother taught me logic when she stated, because I said so, that's why. Anybody ever had that said to them or heard themselves say it? Yeah. My mother taught me foresight when she advised, make sure you wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. I heard that one. My mother taught me about genetics when she stated, you are just like your father. My mother taught me about anticipation when she promised, you are really going to get it when you get home. And finally, my mother taught me about justice when she said, one day, if you have kids, I hope they turn out just like you so you'll realize everything I have had to put up with. Regardless of our age or our circumstance, this is the day when many of us remember and give thanks for the wisdom that our mothers or those persons who were mother figures to us have offered and they still bestow. To that end, the florists have been busy over the last week, and the greeting card aisles have been full. As well, for some of you, it's also a day when your children or loved ones are expressing their gratitude to you for all you do. Maybe by organizing a family celebration, having you over for dinner sending you flowers, arranging a Skype or a Zoom call, or doing something else that is special. It can be a very good and meaningful day. But at the same time, for others of us, this can be a challenging or even difficult occasion. We may acutely feel the absence of our mothers because of death or because we're separated by many, many miles. We may lament that our relationship with our mothers left or leaves something to be desired. Or on this day that the church also calls Christian Family Sunday, we may recognize that our relationship with some of our own children or other family members may not be quite as we would wish. Such realities can be challenging. And it can be easy on days like this to feel that we've somehow failed to measure up to certain ideals somehow haven't quite made the mark. Well, if that's the case for you, I can assure you that you are definitely not alone. This past week, I tried really hard to find an inspiring biblical example of a really supportive and nurturing family. 
And you know what? I couldn't find him. I couldn't find even one. Indeed, many of the family situations described in the Bible give the word dysfunctional a whole new meaning. For example, as the story of Abraham and of Adam and Eve unfolds right at the very beginning, son Cain kills his brother Abel. Later in Genesis, God promised a child to the elderly couple Abram and Sarah. But Abram doubted this could ever happen, so he made out with Sarah's wife, maid Hagar, who then had a son Ishmael, which caused Sarah to get jealous and caused her to retaliate even further by threatening to kill Hagar and Ishmael and forcing them to flee. Real loving family stuff, right? And even in the New Testament, Luke reports that Mary and Joseph were well on their way home after visiting Jerusalem before realizing what? That they had forgotten Jesus somewhere in the big city of Jerusalem. And that they had absolutely no idea where he was. So the pattern is pretty clear. Even long venerated biblical families had their troubles. Just like some of us may have ours. Therefore, I think that today's reading from John's Gospel is pretty timely. For Jesus once again reminds us that love is neither natural nor ine inevitable and needs to be nurtured intentionally in some practical ways wherever and whenever that is possible. Indeed, as he faces his own betrayal and death, he shows his love for his disciples by specifically praying that God would be with them that day and in the days to come. For the disciples had become Jesus' family. They'd been with him through thick and thin and apart from the odd reference to his mother Mary appearing and one or two references to his brother James, there's no mention at all of Jesus' own siblings. Rather, his family, his Christian family, were the disciples. And he knew at this particular moment in time that they would soon be facing some very significant challenges. Jesus himself had felt the hatred and the fear that had arisen against him from a whole host of quarters, and he knew that his friends would be facing those same challenges and that their lives, too, would be imperiled. So he prayed. He prayed really, really hard that God would give them the same gifts that had been given to him. That God would protect them, would guide them, would love them, and would offer them moments of joy. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, Jesus prayed. But I ask you to protect them from evil, just as you have me. So please, sanctify them into the truth. For just as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them, and they will need your help. So please, he prayed, be with them, watch over them, bless them, and guide them. 
this prayer is one of the many ways that Jesus showed his abiding love for his friends. And aren't there times when all of us need that kind of love? Need to know that someone is there for us and cares intimately about us? Indeed, is there anyone here who's recently lamented that a spouse or a partner or a sibling or a parent or a child or a grandchild has been giving you too much compassion and care? It's just overwhelmed you with love. Anybody suffering, anybody suffering that problem? How many of you have complained that your employers or the employers of a family member are too generous, too understanding, and that your colleagues are just too helpful and supportive of you? Anybody suffering that particular problem? And how many of you have ever thought or heard someone say, you know what, I don't think I can stay in this church anymore. Because everyone here is just too nice, too caring, too loving. Anyone ever heard or said something like that? Consequently, Jesus prayers that his disciples would be protected and guided and loved and experience moments of joy. Remind us of the things that matter most. The writer Anne Lamont puts it, you are here to love and be loved freely. We all are. If you find out next week that you are terminally ill and we're all terminally ill on this bus of life, what will matter are memories of beauty. What will matter that people love you. And what will matter is that you love them. That but can. And Jesus reminds us that that kind of love can be expressed in a wide variety of important and life-giving ways. Through the support we give one another, through a listening ear, and through words of wisdom that some of our loved ones have left us. Words that continue to live with us and keep that love alive. This past week, some of you have shared some of those words that you've been given. I'm grateful for that, and I'm really privileged to pass them on with permission in slightly edited form. Don't say no unless you have to. And if you say no, stick to it. A message that Ruth heard from her mother. Sandy says, My mother was known by my friends as St. Helen of Nashwaxis because she was never known to speak ill of anyone. She always said, If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. And sometimes that is not easy to do. Ruth McDonald writes that when her husband was ill, I called my mom, Phyllis Bethel, every morning, probably around 5 a.m. Every single day, she answered right away. Just let me talk. And cry. She was my anchor in the storm. She listened and she said, one foot in front of the other, 
do, one foot in front of the other. Heather Sherrard shares a statement that her mother said to her when she was learning how to navigate the adult world. We spend our whole lives pretending to be braver than we are. Permission to be scared to do it anyway. Stacy Bloss says, my mom is wise beyond words, but something that stuck with me is you can be the person you may want to be or others want you to be or the person you are meant to be, but you can't do both successfully. And Angela Murphy, shared some special thoughts about some of the women in this church who are here today who have been so supportive and helpful to her over the years. Marilyn, she says, you have always been there. I thank you for showing me what selfless really means. Ruth, thank you for reminding me to seize the day and that we only get one opportunity to be in that moment. Diane, you taught me that it's okay to take time for me. Okay to care for yourself. Jerry, you taught me how to make cherry balls so I could enjoy this Christmas tradition as I so enjoyed this tradition with my own mother and brought the joy for me back into Christmas. Plus, the cherry balls you taught me to make were better. And Connie, she says, I believe there are angels among us, sent down to us from somewhere up above. They come to you and me in our darkest hours to show us how to live, to teach us how to give, to guide us on our way. This is what happens in churches where the Spirit of God is alive and well and working. The kinds of relationships get built and they do a lot to support us on our way. So all of the words that we have heard from others as well as some of our thoughts and memories, remind us of what it was that Jesus talked so much about on so many occasions. The difference that love can make. So this morning I invite us to give thanks for the love that our mothers or those who were as a mother to us have given us. May we remember those lessons. May we celebrate those gifts. And may we share those lessons with all of those who we consider family. May God bless all of our homes and relationships, whatever they may be, and fill them with a spirit of love. And with you.
Very special welcome to all of you to the service of worship, whether you are here in the sanctuary or worshiping with us online. We hope you enjoy a day filled with moments of grace and love. Those of us here in the building are invited to adjourn downstairs for coffee and refreshments and good conversation, and I hope you'll have a chance to do that. Over this last few days, we have had as a congregation the opportunity to weep with some of those who have been weeping. And I ask that you would keep the family of Rose Jardine, Nancy and her siblings in your thoughts and prayers. Also ask you to keep Sandy Stanley and her family in your prayers as they mourn Herb's uh, untimely and rather unexpected death. Visitation will take place at the Genovacasis Funeral Home today between 2 to 4 and 6 to 8, and funeral service will be tomorrow at 1 p.m. Other announcements, pieces of news? The life and work of the congregation, <clears throat> the life and work of love, requires all of us to do our part to share our gifts and abilities and talents and understandings as fully and as freely as we possibly can. So we give thanks for those gifts, and we give thanks for another sign of that spirit being at work. Good morning. Yesterday, we had the Romero water bottle and food collection, and we collected roughly 800 bottles of water 
and 100 canned meats, along with several other goodies for the Romero House. So thank you all for your contribution. And thank you for all your work. That is indeed reason to celebrate. Let's do so with our dedication here. Let us pray together. Creator God, you have blessed our lives with relationships that both challenge and inspire. We offer these gifts so that we might continue to build relationships with one another and with the whole of creation. Bless these gifts that they may bring wholeness and life abundance to all your people. Amen. Each section of this morning's prayers will end with the word, God with a loving heart. I invite your response to be here. Help us. God of our lives and of our loving, we thank you for the signs of your love and grace and mercy that surround us, that embrace us, that give us hope and strength and joy. And peace. We ask that you would bless those who are dear to us and that you would work in minds and hearts and communities here and around the world to continue to foster that spirit of love and understanding. God with a loving heart hear our prayers. God of home and family, today we thank you for families, whatever their makeup. We especially thank you for mothers and grandmothers and those who were or are mother figures to us. We are grateful for their love and attention for their hard work and for the deep hope that they have cherished for us. We honor before you those who now live only through photos and memories. And we ask that you would grant comfort and strength to those who find this day to be a hard one. God with a loving heart, hear our prayer. God of connections and compassion. This morning we pray for those whose relationships are in need of repair. And we pray especially for those who live in parts of the world where signs of love 
and peace and joy are in such short supply. We pray for all of those who live in places filled with conflict. We pray for those who struggle to put food on the table, to keep shelter over their heads, and to provide the basics of life to those who they love. Continue to foster in us, we pray, and in all the world, the spirit of generosity that was seen here yesterday and in the days before. God with a loving heart. And we also pray today for all of those who have felt life or love slipping through their fingers for those who are struggling with their physical or mental health, for those we know who are facing particular challenges this day, for those whose names we lift before you now, either spoken aloud or in silence. We remember Lois. We remember the Stanley family and the Jardine family. We remember Margie. We remember Mac and family. The Smith family. We pray for Peg and Pam, for Ken and Arlene, for Hillary. We pray for Peter, for Leslie and Richard, for Pam, for Heather B., for Ricky, Mike, Ken, for Joanne and Ron, for Miriam and Rick, for those children who are missing their mom, for Janet, Mary, Betty, Dave, Linda, for Carol, Paul, and Pat, for Carrie, Kyle, and Nancy, for Gary Carpenter, for Stephen, and for those whose names we lift before you now in silence. God with a loving heart, we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Special thanks this morning to the Valley Woodwinds for being with us, for Stephen, for his music, for Leslie, for reading and the PowerPoint, and for Wendy for doing an amazing tech job. We are indeed grateful. Our closing hymn is, Would You Bless Our Homes and Families?
let us go forth from here to show a caring and a daring and a spirit-filled love to all those who we meet. Whatever we do for others, may it be done in the name and in the spirit of God's abiding and ever-present love for us. And now may the grace of God attend you. May the love of God surround you. May the Holy Spirit keep you. This day and always. Amen. Thank you.